Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Totally Indian Football Show with me, your host Siju, and I am super excited. Well, every time I do a podcast, I am, but this is a double happiness for me that I have a privilege to host this particular gentleman on my show this time around as a coach. And this was long overdue um, because also to tell our listeners some backstory to uh, you know me as a journalist and Arata as a player. Um, Arata Yuzumi was the first player, footballer I ever interviewed uh, for me when I started off, you know, as a journalist with uh, the Fan Garage. So this person and his family will always be special for me. So it gives me immense, immense pleasure and happiness and joy to welcome you, uh, to welcome uh, this person to all of you. And we're going to have a great chat and I'm sure it will be a good one. Uh, Arata Yuzumi, uh, you know, you are known as the Indian Samurai in your playing days. Uh, thank you so much for taking time and welcome to the show. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, always good to catch up with you. So let's enjoy the show. Yes, absolutely. So let's get started. Now, we've spoken, you know, I to tell our listeners also the fact that it was my first interview of a footballer. Yes, I was super pumped. This was when, you know, the tail end of Arada's career while he was playing with Mumbai FC. Um, and I still remember after training, he gave me the time. He sat in a hotel in Churchgate uh, or in Kolaba that side. And it was a one and a half, one hour, 45 minute interview, which I had to break down in three parts. Uh, but that was like, he just, he just opened up and I was just blessed to share that story from the time he first kicked the ball at the age of nine. I still remember the story. And till he, could, he was with Mumbai FC. But uh, we've done that. I will probably plug in on towards that story. So you can read it on the Fan Garage website. But this one is going to be all about his coaching journey and how he's been uh, fed in that so far. So Arata, you are a coach at Alliance, Young Champs, uh, Alliance Foundation Young Champs. Um, what's the age category that you coach? At this moment, I'm uh, coaching U19. Okay. And to give us a little bit of uh, backstory in terms of where you started your coaching journey, right? And we all know that when a player, while playing itself, he understands or wants to pursue coaching because he has to begin his journey of getting the licenses done. So when was it that for you that you wanted and you decided to you know, pursue coaching? So uh, it's, it's, uh, I have to go back quite a uh... Here uh, to start with, uh, I always wanted to uh, be a coach uh, since 18 years old. So actually, my first uh, coaching license was when I was in uh, 19 years old in Japan, uh, uh, Japanese tea license. It was. Since then, I was always interested in. And, uh, I was clear about my idea that after playing career, I pursue my career as a uh, football coach. And uh, after I came to India, even before India, so in Japan as well as in Singapore, so I used to take a, a small training session for the school kids of the particular clubs. And uh, after I came to India, I used to invest some time during my holidays to make sure that I, I'm coaching the children. And uh, sometimes it was senior. Whenever I go back to Japan uh, for my holiday, I used to visit some of the senior team, some of the youth team to uh, uh, keep uh, updating myself as a coach as well. And uh, as you mentioned, I my it was my objective to finish at least uh, AFC A before I finish my career, and which I could make it happen. So that was really good. And uh, yeah, th- big thanks to Reliance Foundation Young Champs. After my playing career, it was really really smooth for me uh, to get into this uh, next chapter chapter of my life uh, as a coach. And uh, this organization is giving me everything that I can. Uh, progress or develop myself as a coach so far. Yeah, now you've gathered the knowledge, you know, as a player, you have a set of knowledge about understanding about the game, you know, as you progress uh, within the years. But it's completely different when it comes to coaching because you're no more a player. You have to now, you know, put yourself uh, into a coach's role um, and assess and, you know, get the sessions done. You know, you're watching the match now, not anymore as a player, but how can you get the entire team's responsibilities on you? So was that transition really smooth uh, for you because you've had a playing background or because the coaching role comes with its own responsibilities and challenges, it took a while for you uh, to settle it into this role? Uh, relatively smooth, I would say. Uh, in terms of... Uh, uh... See, uh, 
uh, organizing the session or the creating the annual plan or, you know, all these things I, I've already done, uh, during my career as well, a playing career as well. But, uh, the most biggest struggle was, uh, sharing the knowledge, uh, uh passing on the knowledge to the player. Uh, when I was player, I just need to play, isn't it? But now being a coach, I have to pass on that, uh, uh knowledge to the player or make them understand with the, uh, specific language or the, you know, the sometimes simple one, sometimes complex one. It was really, really challenging for me to, how do I say, uh, uh, talk football instead of playing football, right? So that took a while for me to understand, uh, uh, the, the feeling, uh, of, yes, I'm very clear, uh, with the objective and, uh, I can see that the players are uh, clearly understanding the objective which we want to, as a team, we want to, what as an individual, we want to work on. So, yeah, that way it, it took time. But, uh, yeah, now I'm feeling much, much more comfortable. And, uh, again, you know, I'm lucky to work with a uh, uh, high-potential player in uh, in this academy. So that way... Uh, Again, uh, I'm in a very luxury position to keep developing myself, I believe. Am I making sense? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Uh, but you're, you, you mentioned the start, you're coaching at this point, you're coaching under 19 team. Uh, so when you started, what's the age group that you started with? So I started with U13, then uh, went up to U17 and 18, and then now it's 19. Okay, TK. Great. What has been your learnings uh, from, you know, engaging yourself within these category age group? Because you were once that age and you've gone through the process and you were once that player. And at times as players, uh, because we are young or, you know, you're passionate and you want to play, uh, you might not probably at times agree with what the coach wants you to do. So how is that now, you know, now that you're playing the role on the other side? And you have to deal with these youngsters. So how has that made you probably more uh, accepting to the changes that's happening in football as well? Mm, I think this way, the my uh, my playing career or the you know since I started my playing football since nine years old, right? I think this experience helped me a lot understand what the player feels, and uh, you know eventually it comes down to the honesty. It comes down to the proper explanation to each players, not the uh, team as a whole, but, uh, you know, although there's a 15 players and uh, we call it, it's a football, football, the team sports, but uh, it's a team, but uh, again, it uh, comes down to the individual, right? So if you are uh, being able to speak to the individual to understand the player, him uh, uh, as an individual, I can, uh, I guess we can make a much more uh, clear picture between a uh, coach and the player. So there won't be the player is feeling yeah, disagreement to the coach uh, or the what I'm trying to do. The player is not understanding or not uh, digesting it positively. It shouldn't be the case. And uh, yes, with my experience, I had a lot of uh, uh, case like this that I didn't agree to the coach. But if I look back to it, that time the uh, the explanation was not there from the coach, or the uh, I was not convinced by the coach. So my focus is uh, uh, quite a lot of weight goes to that to make sure that each player is understand and uh, convinced or agreed uh, with me and him, me and team, team and me, him and me. And we are working on towards to the same direction, which is our, uh, individual development. Right. I think, yeah, that's where the uh, whole communication aspect uh, becomes very key, right? I mean, you have to be crystal clear as uh, with regards to what you want the player to get it done for you. Um, and I think that's a great point to have that. And that's something also probably with the sport that things are changing. I mean, it's not what it was probably while you were playing. Uh, there are a lot of changes happened since then we call it modern football now. Uh, so I think these are the few things that even coaches are trying to imbibe uh, with regards to building that one relationship, which also includes having a clear communication. And as you mentioned, the whole individual mm. development, uh, which pushes then for the team to become better. So, yeah, that's that's a great point over there. Mm. 
somewhere there <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm just get i'm just i hope i've got it right <laughs> of what yeah yeah, yeah but see uh, the north of my pain yours could be but it's almost in the same line so it, it's difficult for me to uh, explain you know uh, uh, but anyway yeah we are in the same line for sure let's continue yeah <laughs> okay so and from as per to as per with regards with coaching and playing how different are these two dif- i mean these particular roles because you've been a player and now you're a coach uh, what are the differences similarities and how has it been for you like mm of course i mean the job is uh, 180 degrees different it's about uh, it's not a playing football anymore but uh, uh coaching football so like i said it's it's not easy to uh, express football with the words right uh, it's much easier uh, to express with the action football is of course it's a sport <laughs> so you can easily uh, show the uh, demonstration whatsoever but if you have to uh, explain that in details in specific uh, points uh, it is very difficult bit diff- difficult uh, sometimes because you play uh, almost unconsciously you can play football right you are almost mastering the uh, skill or the the say uh, situation or awareness or the anticipating uh, the next action what's going to happen because of this situation or that situation right but then that passing that knowledge to the player is completely different uh, challenge uh, when you are a player and a coach so that is a uh, one biggest difference also <clears throat> i'm doing the youth coaching so youth development co- i mean youth side so my focus goes more on the development hence i have to understand the player uh, much more than the senior level why because those players are always looking for or, mm, how do i say they also need to be valued by what they think right then uh, it's so difficult to explain though mm, but anyway it's not result oriented so it's more on the developmental de- orient- oriented so i have to go down we have to go down into the de- uh, development of the individual and i have to make sure uh, everything is around that objective mm, so yeah and uh, yeah mm, prayer mm, difficult to explain though <laughs> no problem i think uh, basically if you have to put it in simpler terms as a player you would probably more focus on yourself but here the responsibilities are much larger because as a coach you have to take care of each and every player in the team because the result will come only when the team plays and performs as a as a unit um what do you miss from your playing days if there's something that you would dearly miss apart from okay you miss probably miss the playing uh playing time of the sport uh but apart from that what else do you miss mm. see youth coach again that comes down to that see i like the results <laughs> i like that uh, you know like a really result oriented uh black or uh, black or white uh but uh, when you do the youth coaching that does not apply right because it's not result oriented so if i miss one thing uh when i was player and at this moment being a youth coach is that i want to put myself into that really serious uh, uh competitive uh environment whether you win or lose you lose you lose your job you win you get more a simple that so that part yes i'm missing it a bit But otherwise you know yeah of course other otherwise playing time yeah sometimes that's why i play with uh, with uh, my my voice and i try to show off a bit more <laughs> but yeah otherwise it's 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 fun to be a coach yeah now as you mentioned your youth team coach uh, but grassroots is such a key aspect right because that's where you do all the developing side of it and where you you know you reap the rewards once the player is grown up and you know uh, is ready to face that competition side of things so uh, in a way coaches like you are playing that key role at that level you know getting that knowledge getting those licenses done um and investing in the grassroots and youth football so what been you've been here for years now and you've grown on to take up the under 19 at this point uh how do you see as a whole in general about indian football to say how are we standing today with all of these programs like uh 
this you know where you're catering towards and investing in the youth side of things as opposed to when you were probably playing or started playing in indian football uh, how are things and how do we stand at this point progress is definitely you know academy like this reliance foundation young champs is here existing in india itself is a uh, amazing uh, improvement uh, pro- progression uh uh but at the same time uh the progression is uh, uh slower than what it is uh, it should be i believe uh cuz uh see definitely in indian football is uh, improving but at the same time world football also improving and the speed of uh, uh world football improving is still faster than the how indian football is uh, improving from beginning there's a huge gap between world and uh, india and uh, the gap is becoming bigger and bigger if this is a pace that we are uh, uh developing so it is a uh, urgent matter that uh, we need many more uh, academy or the uh, youth development side like reliance foundation young champs uh in all over the country to secure the uh, uh playing time for each categories uh uh to keep developing or the providing the uh, talent for the future of indian football otherwise uh yeah it's 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 going to be very difficult you know people people were talking about 2030 world cup or uh, 10 years down we should be playing world cup or some of players should be playing in europe uh, uh, you know it's, it's uh you can talk about the dream no problem but uh, if you talk about the dream you got to do you got to act on it and uh, the dream yeah i mean the objective should be realistic as well at this moment talking about europe uh, indian player going europe and successful it's impossible but uh, still people expect that to happen so you know the gap is there the actual uh, youth coach or the we uh, walk on the pitch and uh, see the reality and uh, the people talk about their dream is there's a huge gap so you know we need to imp- Mm, develop our understanding of uh, uh, football uh, much more than now uh, if we want to really achieve the objective of, for example, India playing World Cup or the India competing with the uh, top Asian countries like Japan, Korea, Australia, uh, so and so. So yeah, um, b- maybe sound a bit negative, but I think this is a reality. That- we need to really wake up you know since i came to india we were always talking about uh, india is a uh, sleeping giant right sleeping giant yeah i think so yeah but yeah, uh, we are yeah. still sleeping giant today and we are talking the same thing grassroots i think i heard this grassroots since i came to india 2007 okay maybe a little bit later, later 2008 9 by then we were already talking about grassroots but then since then 15 years already uh, country like india have full of resources full of uh, potential full of uh, talent i don't think they, this is where we should be at this moment ideally yeah? but uh, the positive part is things are happening so that way it's good yeah the pace that we are moving is probably very very slow as compared to the other countries i mean we don't even have to compare to our european neighbors i mean european way countries but we can slow. only take a look at Asian football right um yeah. we are still lagging behind among them and the little is clear right yeah still we we are talking about a cheat and not at a uh, way to low level you know by now we shouldn't be talking about that anymore but the fact is it's there and it's a really really bad culture that is imprinted in this uh, india who said but uh, that uh, that's a fact we just need to face and we have to tackle it yeah Yeah as someone who's working in in the industry and as as a coach in the Indian football ecosystem rather uh what are what are your thoughts what do you think how can you curb something like age fraud because even for the federation or anyone um it had the roots are deep rooted <laughs> rather uh, f- about this whole issue so how do you think we can probably bring out bring out bring about at least some kind of change uh with regards to age fraud Uh, we have to change our mentality completely 
And we have to understand that the youth, you don't need to win things. You just need to focus on developing the player. And eventually that's going to help the ecosystem as well. At this moment, I said, Club are paying so much money uh, for the players and the buying and spending transfer fee, uh, spending a lot uh, of money to buy foreigners or even local players. But instead of that, if you have enough uh, a proper form or the proper youth development system, each club and uh, 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 investing some money and time, you can produce the players because it's it's proof that the uh, the Indian players have enough talent to compete compete with a uh, abroad team. For example, we go to Japan, twelve years old. We went to Japan and we compete with J League team players. Uh, we can compete that time, twelve years of being twelve years old. That itself is proof that uh, you know. Indian football can reach this level if there's a proper setup. Then it means the uh, the age club should be able to provide uh, uh, so-called good players for their team. Hence, they don't need to pay so much of money for transfer fee or the uh, player salary. But uh, with decent amount of money investment, and then you can create a good player for your team as well as you can sell those players to the other club. So, you know, ecosystem also becomes much much healthier than at this moment just throwing the money. From the pocket to the, uh, you know, into whatever it is, and you are not making any money out of that, right? So, it's strange that uh, we don't see it that way. It's uh, ISS already seven, right? This is ISS seven or ISL eight. I think we are entering into the ninth edition, the one that's coming up. Ninth, I you see, it's nine, a ninth edition. Nine. Nine years, nine years, and how many clubs have the proper use development set up? Uh, shocking, but yeah, that is where we are at this moment. So yeah, we can dream big, but uh, yeah, look at look at us, we're nowhere close. But yeah, good thing is, is things are happening. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's it's definitely uh, not as the same as probably when you started playing. That's that's the whole point, but. Uh, I mean, you don't have to feel sorry or about, you know, feel bad about the fact that these are negative points. Now, things when you don't agree with the majority doesn't become negative, but it's a very constructive uh, outlook to that. And that is the reality. I think that some most of them are uh, talking about those aspects to be realistic, uh, even when <laughs> while we are dreaming, probably. But Arada, coming to the point that, you know, uh, how has your understanding of the sport changed? uh now that you're coaching or has it changed has it like you know upgraded have you uh got better understanding of the sport and uh, does you know coaching help you with that regards mm, idea about football remain the same um, but uh of course I'm, I'm i'm keep updating myself so i try to understand what's more than football what is a uh, difference between when I was playing and now what is the trend of the football at this moment. And at the same time, I'm aware that, you know, these trends come and goes. Uh, whichever the team becomes a uh, champion of the Champions League or the World Cup, the football becomes trend. So it doesn't mean that I have to use the trend at this moment. Uh, rather than that, understanding that each player's uh, characteristics and try to find the best way for each player to uh, play with their maximum potential. So, yes, I'm updating myself and uh, I'm gaining my understanding uh, more in terms of uh, new new uh, information, but uh, my core uh, of understanding of football remains the same. It's all about giving 100%, all about defending together, attacking together, in uh, each moment of the game, which is uh, maybe four moments, if you want to call it five moments, including set pieces, but uh, basically attack, defense, transition to attack, transition to defense, how you tackle in that situation and uh, which way and uh, what is the agreement between the team and, uh, uh, yeah. Right. Now, you mentioned that you kind of also miss the competitive nature, you know, as that you had as a, a player. So... To ask you about your future plans, does do we would we see Arata Izumi probably take up a bigger role in a competitive environment as a coach? Mm, I don't know what do you mean by bigger role. I'm I'm having a huge role here already. But in terms of competitive, that is my objective. I would love to. I I am always uh, looking for the opportunity to get into the senior level. So if it's right timing, right right place. Then uh, definitely, I'll try uh, try my best to get the opportunity. 
Okay. Finally, I think you must have answered this question in all the responses that you gave. But just to probably reiterate on that, what do you enjoy the most about coaching? Mm. <laughs> Winning things. <laughs> <laughs> But this, yeah, same time I, I I can say fairly I I enjoy watching uh you know players development you know you can see uh, eventually player in a sense they are footballer but before footballer they are human being right so they get happiness you know and you can see the happiness when you con especially when you connect to the player like they want to share uh with me that you know this part is going well you know coach it was not happening but now it's happening and you can see that excitement. The, the the actual development is that you know everything is in that smile right so that way i definitely enjoy and uh, i'm always uh uh feeling lucky to be a coach of uh, uh players here not only my u19 but all of the players uh, here so i'm in a very uh, lucky position i must say <laughs> Right I think uh, so am I I am blessed and again as I mentioned in the start thank you so much for this privilege for always uh, you know probably responding to my messages and being this sweet person uh, thank you once again arata thank you so much for taking time uh, and sharing with me and coming on to the show thank you so much you're most welcome whenever you want to talk let's talk Yes, absolutely. Now I think it's time I should also probably say, you know, come say hi to your family as well. It's been a while. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure, 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 sure. So thank you so much once again. All the very best for whatever is ahead of you, and hope to see more of Arada Izumi in the coaching side. Thank you to all our listeners. Thank you once again, guys, for tuning into the Totally Indian Football Show for showering all the love. Continue to do that. Do follow and subscribe to our podcast. It's available on all audio platforms. So please do that, and uh, let's. make some more buzz and noise among around these people that their stories need to be heard uh, and you know deserve to be shared so thank you once again and uh, this is me your host sidru signing off bye